Hello, this is Greg Ristabin from Olympus. I'd like to welcome everyone today to this webinar on Total Focusing Method versus Phased Array, when to use each method. In this webinar, you will learn the difference between the TFM and the Phased Array UT. After this webinar, you should be comfortable making a decision on when to use one method over another. We will cover the advantages and limitations of each method and propose specific applications where TFM should be selected and others where PAUT should be chosen. Our pre presenter today is Stefan Kucher. Stefan is a global advanced product support specialist. He's worked at Olympus in product development and as a product specialist for nine years. In 2017, he transitioned to work in the inspection world to gather more applicative knowledge with boots on the ground. In 2019, Stefan rejoined Olympus as a leader for global advanced product ap applications. Stefan is now supporting worldwide on applications, trainings, and industry projects, and as an ultrasonic advanced product specialist. This informational webinar has been scheduled for approximately one hour. If you have questions, please type them into the Q&A panel in the lower right portion of the screen during the presentation. If we don't get to your questions during the live event, they will be addressed personally either by email or phone after the event. So now, without further ado, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Stefan. Stefan, you may take it away. Thank you, Greg. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to this uh, session. As Greg mentioned, we're going to go over TFM and phase array. Um, what are the differences between the two, when to choose one versus the other, and uh, the other versus one. So um, the agenda for today, uh, we will start with a brief recap of what is a linear scan and what's a sectoral scan for phase array. And we'll also cover the differences between full matrix capture, or FMC, and total focusing method, or TFM. Uh, the topic of FMC and TFM methods, how they work, uh, how they're set up, the, that's already been covered in the previous webinar, so we'll go fairly quickly over that, but uh, you're more than welcome to, uh, to view our previous sessions about that if you have any questions. Uh, we will then talk about signal characteristics, what are the differences between a phase array signal and a TFM signal, uh, what advantages does TFM bring, what drawbacks as well. In terms of scan plan, uh, what elements should we consider? Can we use any probe, any strategy, and the technology will just figure it out, or is there more to it than just uh, beautiful images? Uh, then we will talk about, of course, zero degree inspection, angle beam inspection, how does TFM compare to phase array? how similar are they, and what separates them from uh, each other from uh, an application point of view. Then finally, we will wrap this session with a summary uh, of what was discussed and also uh, a period of question. So first of all, phase array linear scan. Uh, a phase array linear scan, basically, uh, you have focal laws generated over a series of elements using the same angle, and the A-scan density and coverage is defined by the element step resolution. So one aperture generating one focal law, then we move on to a different aperture generating another focal law with the same angle um, altogether. The advantages of a linear scan, so it produces the same results as conventional UT raster scan, so without the need of moving the probe in and out from the weld like so. It eases the calibration due to uh, only producing one angle. The beam resolution also is the same regardless of sound path as all focal laws are parallel. However, uh, as you can see in this representation, coverage is pretty poor with only one angle in one group. So that leads to uh, the need typically for multiple groups and also uh, long setups, long calibrations, and larger data files. For a sectoral scan, the focal laws 
uh, of different angles mm -hmm. are generated using the same elements. So one aperture, one fixed aperture, generates multiple angles, and the density of the A scan and coverage is defined by the range of angles from uh, start to end, and also uh, angle resolution or angle step, one degree, two degrees, 0 0.5 degree, and so on. Um, an advantage of a sectoral scan is that you have a large covered uh, area in the inspected part from a small footprint on the surface. Uh, the probe is this, uh, in this example is uh, quite big, actually. Um, typically, a smaller 16-element probe can cover uh, half an inch V-weld uh, with no problem in a single uh, index position. Uh, also, flaw characterization is improved because of the multiple angles. Fewer focal laws are required to cover the weld area. However, uh, as we go into longer sound path, the beam-to-beam -beam resolution gets worse. As they're not parallel, they're actually uh, moving away from each other, which also creates uh, more difficult calibrations when we go into these uh, longer sound paths. FMC, or uh, full matrix capture, that is an acquisition strategy. So basically, a single element is pulsed, and all of the probe's element receive the reflected signal. That's done for the first element, probe element, and that's done for the rest of them, and the process repeats until each element of the array has fired, and all transmit and receive combination has been acquired, and that's what we call the FMC raw A scans. The TFM, or total focusing method, on the other hand, is an image reconstruction process that uses those elementary A scans we just talked about. So the process requires key variable inputs such as acoustic propagation mode and resolution. Acoustic propagation mode, meaning uh, are we going to use longitudinal waves, transverse waves, uh, are we going to skip mode convert, etc., and resolution being how fine or how coarse our grid of inspection is going to be. Uh, the resulting wave sets represent the path of the ultrasound beam from the transmitter to a specific position in the region of interest and back to the receiver according to the selected propagation mode. For example, with a 2T, we expect to pulse, hit something, and then receive. With a 40, we expect to pulse, skip, hit something, come back, skip, and then go back into the probe. So why would we switch from phase array to TFM? Is it better than the other one? Is it uh, more precise? Um, as we'll see deeper in this uh, session, it really depends on what you're trying to achieve and what are your priorities. Differences in signal, what to expect from TFM signal compared to phase array. Uh, first of all, TFM has the advantage of being focused everywhere, of course, provided that the setting uh, enables operation in the near field. Uh, past the near field region, focalization parameters have little to no effect on the measurement, just like with phase array. Generally speaking, though, uh, many will agree that TFM can produce more appealing images, which is the uh, driving force behind this technology. TFM performs better than phase array, uh, also when it comes to reducing uh, near-surface echoes or zero-degree inspection, and that is simply because of its firing sequence, where with FMC, you pulse one element at a time compared to phase array, which uh, generates a wavefront from an aperture of elements. So less powerful ultrasound, less reflection from uh, the interface. That being said, using a pitch catch 
phase array configuration, such as uh, a DLA probe, for example, uh, also helps in that issue with the uh, near surface echoes. Uh, another aspect where TFM excels is the reduction of geometrical echoes. And again, that is simply because uh, the TFM natively is focused everywhere in the near field again, uh, and that helps to reduce those uh, unwanted echoes. If we put them side by side, here's an example uh, of a phase array linear scan and the response of 1.5 millimeter side drill holes over a depth range of about 60 millimeters. Uh, the probe used in this example was a 5 megahertz, 0 0.6 millimeter pitch, and it was in direct contact with the block. The focus depth was set to 30 millimeters. So notice, as we, uh, as I told, that uh, the near surface echo or main bang is quite big, and also as we typically see with phase array, the deeper we go in the material, the resolution or the actual shape of the reflector and its amplitude uh, starts to degrade. Now, if we move on to TFM, using the same probe with an LL wave set, uh, longitudinal and longitudinal, notice the difference uh, first in the near surface, but also that as we go deeper and deeper into the material, the whole, the shape of the hole remains much more constant, as well as the amplitude. That's all good and good. Uh, does it have any limitations? Um, generally speaking, phase array exhibits a better signal-to-noise ratio than TFM. And that is simply because of the wider aperture in phase array produces more ultrasound energy than the than the individual pulsars uh, in TFM. However, special envelope processing in TFM, other signal process, uh, will help to improve the SNR. Uh, in this side-by-side -side comparison here, we can see the same reflector with phase array and TFM, normalized to uh, roughly 80% right there. And as you can see, DA scan background noise is better on the phase array than on the, the TFM side. Addition of self-tandem wave set to standard pulse echo. Um, traditional phase array uses pulse echo method where the same group of elements or the same aperture basically pulses and then receives the sound. The self-tandem technique in phase array, although it's less common, and often more dedicated to uh, specialized applications such as the pipe wizard, for example, use one aperture to pulse and a different one to receive. One of the advantages of this technique is that it allows for the detection of vertical flaws. Um, TFM uses the same principle when rebuilding the sound path. And just like when it's applied in phase array, the self-tandem technique requires to be more precise when defining the inspection uh, scan plan because of all the geometry that, uh, that's involved, all the trigonometry that's involved. Uh, parameters like velocity, thickness are very important to get accurately. So aside from uh, vertical flaws that are hard to detect and characterize, such as uh, lack of fusions on ERW welds, uh, the self-tandem technique or wave set also provides better imaging of flaws such as cracks. Um, it's just that the profile of the flaw, as we can see on the very right hand here, is just more true to reality instead of the traditional uh, corner trap and tip diffraction. That, that can be fairly easy to interpret for uh, experienced users but may appear as two separate flaws for the beginners. So in the end, TFM just helps remove that doubt when using the right uh, wave set. Scan plan and modeling. Um, just like phase array, preparation is key. Uh, in phase array, 
there are some criteria that have to be met to ensure that the inspection results are correct, meaning um, so amongst them there is uh, beam perpendicularity to the weld bevel, um, full volume coverage, adequate coverage also of the heat affected zone. The same principle will apply to FMC and TFM. Uh, detection and characterization capabilities are heavily dependent on the selected wave set and also the orientation of the flaw and the part geometry are essential to uh, beam modelization when setting the scan plan. So if you uh, do not plan it well enough ahead, you may miss or entirely miss uh, some defects. The advantage of multi-group um, for that planning you may require your inspection may require multiple different wave sets to adequately adequately cover uh, the inspection area so in this example uh, of an ERW weld the first flaw was better detected using the self tandem 3T wave set so detection of the ID over trim here. Well, if we look at the second flaw, it is better detected with the first leg pulse echo method because it was getting in the hook rack and detecting the uh, corner trap. In this inspection, only three groups were required. However, the Omniscan X3 can go up to four simultaneous TFM groups. Another important part of a proper scan plan or preparation is selecting the right probe. Uh, same as with phase array, uh, focusing has its uh, limits, which means that what is true in phase array is also true in TFM. Uh, probe frequency, element size, number of elements in the probe, there are all some factors that will have an impact on the setup and the quality of the inspection. Uh, if we look at the most right example, uh, a probe with a higher frequency and a bigger pitch will allow for larger sound paths as these parameters increase the near field, hence the focusing ability. Um, on the other hand, the near surface resolution is impacted negatively. Um, so in the end, a good preparation for an inspection should include probe strategy but also feasibility tests on uh, coupons or samples to ensure that the area of interest is covered adequately and returns good signal. Zero degree inspection using TFM instead of phase array linear scan. Why use TFM without a wedge? So in many images that we see uh, mainly in promo uh, material, we often see probe in contact with the part or the demo block directly. But why is that? Um, there are three main reasons explaining this. Uh, first of all, this ensures that there will be no wedge echo interfering with the inspection. Uh, number two, we do not lose any single strength in the wedge, so no wedge attenuation is involved. And number three, uh, also remember that TFM is focused everywhere, but as long as we stay in the near field of the probe. If we add a wedge, a delay line, it means that part of this near field is now in the wedge and not in the material where we actually want to focus. In this example, we have a small flat bottom hole that is resolved from the background signal using a 10 megahertz small pitch probe. Adding a 23 millimeter Brexelite wedge induces a lot of noise. Um, first, because uh, we had to add 30 dBs of gain to reach the same 80% amplitude. Uh, also, the signal or the flat bottom hole is much less defined. And finally, there's the wedge echo repeat also that's interfering with our inspection. 
TFM can uh, reveal what's in. So um, another difference between TFM compared with phase array is that it lets you see what's hidden behind the first indication. Um, we see it uh, a lot with the resolution blocks. So we, we get very nice images of side drill holes. Uh, but actually, uh, I'm guilty myself of setting a linear scan with phase array, putting it on the specific block with uh, vertically stacked side drill holes, and uh, just expecting to see uh, all three side drill holes with the resolution getting worse and worse as I go deeper uh, in the material. Um, that's not the case with uh, with phase array. We we just I just got too used to using uh, TFM in this. Um, here are a few examples, application examples of the benefits uh, TFM can bring to zero degree inspection, starting with uh, HTHA or high temp hydrogen attack, um, such as early stage uh, HTHA, micro fissuring, volumetric defects. So some examples of uh, applications that are either hard to detect or altogether impossible to detect with a traditional phase array. So example number two, some volumetric. Uh, another example is the detection of links between blisters or uh, stepwise cracking. And just like the example with the stacked side drill holes, TFM allows for the detection of not only the blisters, but also the link between them. This can make a huge difference between accept and reject, or in other words, between safety and uh, bursting. Angle beam inspection, comparing phase array sectoral scans with various TFM modes. Can I use a TFM, can I use TFM with an angle wedge? The answer is yes. Of course, uh, at the end of the day, ultrasound is still ultrasound, and we cannot reinvent physics. Um, as omnidirectional as a single element pulse can be, there's always a range of operation where the probe will provide good signal, but outside of this range, the sensitivity, the resolution, and just the overall ability to detect any indication will significant, significantly drop. In this example, we have the same probe on the same samples at the same position. One without a wedge in direct contact with the sample, and on the other side with an angle wedge designed for shear wave uh, inspection. Uh, without a wedge, we were using an LL transmission mode or wave set, uh, and we can Basically, we cannot detect anything in there, just noise. While when using the proper wedge and the proper wave set, it's, uh, the indication on the weld bevel is easily uh, resolved. And that just proves that although, yes, FMC and TFM provide great imaging and help to resolve new applications, uh, physics is still physics. And we have to, um, to work with it. Now looking at a few signal comparisons between phase array and TFM on a 25 millimeter thick welded sample. Um, if we think phase array and sidewall lack of fusions, the best results are provided by the ultrasound coming perpendicular to the flaw. Um, skipping off the bottom and going back directly on the weld bevel. The same logic applies to TFM and in this case, Pulse Echo 40 wave set was providing the best result and equivalent results to uh, phase array, in fact. ID cracking. The phase array Pulse Echo technique works to detect, well, works to detect, sorry, and to characterize crack or crack-like indications by detecting one strong uh, corner trap signal, 
maybe a few facets, and a tip diffraction. This method, when using uh, a pulse echo wave step, is still valid with uh, TFM. And using, the again, the same indication, we can see that the flaw is equivalent in both cases. Uh, we have the corner trap, tip diffraction, corner trap, tip diffraction. Basically, uh, the flaw signature remains the same, but we have more resolution with TFM. The advantage of uh, a self-tandem mode or self-tandem wave set, as I was describing earlier, comes into flaw characterization, uh, where the flaw is actually truer or more accurate compared to what it actually looks like in the part. So comparing phase array pulse echo to a TFM self-tandem mode with 3T uh, and using or reconstructing based on two different uh, zones, let's call it this way, from uh, the phase array probe. It's true for ID, it's true for OD as well. Uh, again, a comparison between pulse echo phase array on the left and pulse echo TFM on the right. Corner trap, facet, tip. Corner trap, facet, facet, and tip. If we switch to self tandem and 5T instead, we have the same flaw signature or same kind of result as uh, we had on the ID with a 3T. So what advantage or why use pulse echo versus self tandem? It's a matter of preference and uh, ease of interpretation as well. It can provide better imaging uh, for, for the non-NDT people, for example. Uh, volumetric defects such as porosities. So why do volumetric defects such as porosities produce a weaker signal when compared to planar defects such as uh, lack of fusions? Basically, there's no straight surface to produce a strong ultrasound reflection. Uh, TFM can help to discern such indication from the background noise because it is focused everywhere but also uh, the reflection from multiple angles can help to reconstruct the signal. As we can see on the left phase array detection of a porosity and on the right TFM with a slightly better uh, SNR. There are a few uh, more examples of comparisons between phase array and TFM. And in these comparisons, uh, all four available TFM groups were used to produce um, different responses, different uh, signal uh, analysis from different wave sets. So on the left, the phase array with its signal as we're used to see here and there. And on the right, the TFM with the various responses. Another example of phase array and TFM and how they compare, how they uh, complement each other. Phase array, one, two, TFM, TFM, one, two, one, two. And one more, phase array on the left with very uh, shallow indications and the equivalent with TFM and how they compare. So I really breeze through, through this one. Um, as a summary, <laughs> um, so to answer the question, is uh, TFM better than phase array? Um, whether the total focusing method is better than phase array, that really comes to a matter of application and preferences, uh, depending on what uh, type of inspection you're going to tackle. 
the uh, the sorry the preference remains uh, an important factor, but also testing and validations beforehand, modeling, scan plan, always, always. Uh, when using phase array in focus mode, so combined with the appropriate uh, good quality probe, good quality wedge, the results can be as good as TFM. But this only applies in the area where the beam is focused. And although imaging and characterization is impressive with TFM, it also can lead to poor or no detection at all if the user uh, do not know which wave set to use for his application. So it's not magic. It requires uh, some preparation as well, some uh, guidelines to follow, but it can help tremendously in terms of uh, imaging. And that uh, concludes this 30-minute talk. Sorry for uh, freezing to read so fast. Um, I received a few questions in the Q&A. Uh, let me see. So one of them is, uh, what about sizing? So you talk about representation, but how can I dimension the indication? Um, yeah, sizing. Uh, actually, TFM sizing is still under review by the different manufacturers, uh, the different code committees, the different, just the industry in general. So there's no clear answer yet about the guidelines to follow or the methods to adopt. Um, and that's, that's, I know, a boring answer. Um, but what I can tell you is that from the test I did so far, uh, the comparisons uh, I did in this presentation, uh, there seems to be a correspondence between phase array and uh, the TFM pulse echo mode when using 6 dB drop method or tip diffraction method as well. Uh, sizing of these indications is very comparable between phase array and TFM. Um, a rapid drop technique or maybe even diffraction technique would be maybe more maybe be more appropriate for self tandem techniques um but I didn't dig too too deep in there, so uh more testing more validation is definitely required uh before coming to a conclusion uh, for this one so uh although it's still up for debate uh what to use, when, and, and how to size it. Um, that will be addressed also in the, the future webinar that we're going to have, I don't remember, maybe next month or so, um, about FMC and TFM code compliance. So um, stick around, and we'll probably have uh, more answers in there. Um, And yeah, I think that uh, concludes this uh, this session. If uh, there's any, yeah, there's uh, some other questions that we will address through emails because it will uh, require some more investigation on our side. Um, Greg, all yours. Thank you, Stefan. Um, and for all the attendees out there, we'll leave the uh, presentation open just for a little bit longer. If you have other questions, continue to type them in. We'll gather them up and uh, um, go through them afterwards, and your questions will be answered either by email or by phone after the event. On behalf of Olympus, I'd like to thank all the attendees for joining us and Stefan for his expertise and participation in today's event. We hope this material presented was informative and useful. This webinar will be archived on our website at www.olympus-ims.com. I realize that some folks have had a, a trouble connecting or um, hearing the audio all the way through. Um, the audio seems to have cut out here and there. I'm sure that we've got some bandwidth challenges worldwide when our conditions are proving here, so we can probably expect that to happen a few times. So. The full presentation with all the audio will be on our website uh, 
within uh, a couple of days here. So please check back to uh, www.olympus-ims for the updated webinar um, file. Everyone who registered for the event will receive a follow-up email with links to the archive presentation. So even if you didn't join us, you're still going to get a link to watch it after the fact. So um, everyone will be able to see it again. That's going to do it for this morning. Thanks again for your interest and for taking the time to attend this event. And we will see you again next time.